Acknowledgement uh, uh, in uh, acknowledgement that is in uh, Gobakan protocol, and that acknowledgement concept you call it as cumulative acknowledgement concept. So, what is cumulative acknowledgement means? I'll just again show with the help of an example here. Here you can see two packets first. Packet 0 and packet 1 both are received at the receiver side, correct? So, when both are received at the receiver side, two packets. Is it really required for the receiver to send acknowledgements for both the packets or is it enough for the receiver to send only this acknowledgement one? So instead of sending two acknowledgements, can he send only one acknowledgement? Which is that acknowledgement? Acknowledgement one. So immediately after acknowledgement one is received at the sender side, here acknowledgement one is received at the sender side, sender should correctly understand that this receiver has received both the packets that is packet 0 as well as packet 1 yes or no if the receiver has received two packets in order both the packets in order that is 0 and 1 in order only then he will be transmitting the acknowledgement 1 if he is not getting the acknowledgement uh, i mean if, if the receiver is not sending the proper acknowledgement like in this case see receiver is not sending ack3 even if he is receiving packet 3 he is not sending ack3 why because he is not getting the packet 2. He has not received the packet in order. So, instead of ACK3, he is sending what? He is resending the acknowledgement ACK1. So, ACK1 is resend. That means what? The receiver has not correctly received the packets. So, if he is sending the correct acknowledgement here, ACK1 is sent. That means what? Both the packets, all the packets before is before packet 1 or uh, yeah, all the packets before packet 1. So, that is what? Only one packet was sent before packet 1 that is packet 0. So, both packet 0 and packet 1 must be correctly received at the receiver. That is why our receiver is sending ACK1. So, that ACK1 acts as a cumulative acknowledgement for both packet 0 and packet 1. So, similarly here you can notice. Packet 2, packet 3, packet 4 and packet 5, all these 4 packets are correctly received at the receiver. So, instead of sending the acknowledgement for all 4 packets, receiver can send one cumulative acknowledgement for packet 5. So, what is that? ACK5 only can be sent which indicates that ACK2, ACK3, ACK4 and ACK5. So, all 5 packets, sorry, all 4 packets are correctly received at the receiver. So, only ACK5 will do at the sender side. So, sender should understand that once ACK5 arrives, ACK2, 3, 4 and 5, it is cumulative acknowledgement for all four packets in order. So, this cumulative acknowledgement concept also is there in go back and protocol. So, this is an advantage in go back and protocol. What is it? Instead of sending one packet at a time, the go back and sends multiple packets at a time. Right. So, again here cumulative acknowledgement concept is there. So, what is cumulative acknowledgement? Instead of sending acknowledgement for every packet, the receiver is sending the acknowledgement for last correctly received packet. So, if the last correctly received packet is uh, uh, you know, it's received properly, then the receiver will send one acknowledgement for the for which indicates it's a uh, acknowledgement, cumulative acknowledgement for all correctly received packets at the receiver side. So, this is the advantage in go back in. But the there is one major drawback and go back in. What is the major drawback and go back in? You can just notice here. Packet 3, packet 4 and packet 5. 3 packets are correctly received. No corrupted data. It is all corrected data which is received at the receiver side. Even then the receiver is discarding. Instead of that, can the receiver store those packets? Let him not accept or deliver these 3 packets. Why? Because the receiver is accepting the packet in order only. So, he need not deliver this packet. He need not accept these packets. Can he simply store these correctly received packets in his buffer so that later point of time, once the packet 2 arrives, that means once the in order delivery is there or once the packet 2 arrives, he can extract packet 2, he can send packet 2 along with that, he can extract these 3 packets which was stored earlier in his buffer. Those 3 stored packets can be extracted and in order he can deliver, see after 2, 
three, then four, then five. All these can be delivered to the above layer, right? So instead of discarding these three packets, three, four, five, he could have stored these three packets in the buffer so that once packet two arrives, he can transmit packet two, then he can extract three, four, five from the buffer and all four packets could be delivered to the application layer. But instead of that, what is happening in go back end? The go back end protocol is resending again all those packets. So packet two, along with that, three, four, five also is resent, which is unnecessary here, right? So that is a major good drawback in go back in protocol. So I hope this go back in protocol is understood. Yes. So you can just uh, recall the uh, concepts here of go back in. Uh, I hope you all have understood this. Okay. Yes. So here uh, we'll just uh, see the FSM of go back in once. That is the finite state machine. So you will just concentrate on the sender side of go back in. So what is sender side of go back in? It's only representing the sender here. Okay. Initially, our sender will initialize the two pointers. What are the two pointers? Base and next sequence number. Like I already said, base will be always pointing to the first packet in the window. Next sequence number will be pointing to the next packet that should be transmitted in the window. I'm sorry. You can just see here. Base will be pointing to the first packet. Next sequence number will be pointing to the next packet that is to be transmitted. To be transmitted. Okay. In the window, you can see here. If the window size is n, I can just say here from base to next sequence minus 1. That means what? From base to next sequence minus 1 means it indicates all yellow packets, right? So base to next sequence minus 1 indicates all unacknowledged packets. That means these packets are already sent to the receiver but acknowledgement is not received. So you call these packets as unacknowledged packets. So where are the unacknowledged packets inside the window? It is from base to next sequence minus 1 just behind the next sequence number pointer so just before the packet so next sequence minus one till then these are the outs uh, what is that unacknowledged packets now what are these blue packets from next sequence number to n minus one n if n is the window size so from next sequence number to n minus one that is all these blue packets indicates these are the packets inside the window but these packets are not yet sent to the receiver. So these are the packets which are not yet transmitted but immediately as and when it arrives from the application layer these packets can be sent. So these are the blue packets which can be sent but not sent. So what are those packets? Next sequence number from next sequence number to n minus 1. These are the packets which can be sent but not yet sent. And again, if I'm taking here from, uh, uh, you can just see here from uh, n plus 1 or you can say from base plus n. Base will be always pointing to the first. So base plus n. Base plus n means what? Always the pointer now it is pointing to outside the window. So base plus n means the pointer that is pointing to the packet that is outside the window. So what is it indicating? These are the packets which are, these are the packets which are not uh, which cannot be sent. These are the packets which cannot be sent. Why? Because these are the packets outside the window and these are the packets which are not arrived also from application layer plus they are outside the window. So base plus n are the packets which indicates which cannot be sent because it is outside the window. What is base minus 1 packets? Base minus 1 packets indicates these are the already acknowledged packets okay so base minus one indicates already acknowledged packets from base to next sequence minus one indicates all packets which are already sent but acknowledgement is not received unacknowledged packets base to next sequence minus one from next sequence number to base plus n minus one so base plus n minus one means what it is last but one packet inside the window so next sequence to base plus n minus one indicates already sent i mean the packets which can be sent but not yet sent because they are not yet arrived from the application layer these blue packets but base plus n means what these are the, the it points outside the window base plus n points outside the window meaning is these are the packets which can never be sent which cannot be sent because these are the packets which are outside the window 
okay right so you remember all these terms with the help of that we'll just see this extended uh, diagram just recall this rdt send uh, concept what we had discussed in our uh, rdt protocol yes so you just uh, uh, can see here rdt send immediately after the packet arrives here from the application layer at the sender side only we are in sender side as in when the data or the packet arrives from the application layer to the transport layer this function is invoked immediately the condition is checked what is it the packet should be inside the window so how do you check the packet is inside the window it is with the help of this next sequence number indicates the pointer which is pointing to the packet which should be sent next right so packet which should be sent next should be it's a pointer that is next sequence number which is pointing to and that packet or the that sequence number should be always less than base plus n what is base plus n indicating it is a pointer which it is a packet which indicates that it is outside the window so base plus n n will be always pointing to outside the window you can just see here base plus n indicates this packet n is a window size base is the one which is pointing to beginning of the window base plus n indicates the pointer which is pointing to the packet that is outside the window so next sequence number should be always less than base plus n so if that condition is true immediately you just see here the packet that has just arrived from the application layer the data that is arrived just from the application layer you add a sequence number to that data insert that data add checksum also to that data and prepare a packet for that particular data. So data for which checksum is added and a new sequence number is assigned and now along with all these now what you have to do create a new packet with all, all these things right and for that particular packet you have now a sequence number you can track that packet with the help of the sequence number so send packet is a function invoked with the help of the sequence number identify that packet. Now you are ready to send that particular packet. So UDT send indicates now you are sending that packet to the below layer, network layer at the sender side. So UDT send. So what are you sending now? It is this above packet which you have just prepared, that packet you are transmitting and immediately there for that particular packet that you have sent, a timer should be started. So how do you start the timer? You check a condition. See base will be always pointing to the first packet in the window. If it is the first packet, if it is the oldest packet, oldest packet means the very first packet that is sent inside the window, then in that case, for that particular packet, you should start the timer. Only for the oldest packet, you start the timer. So start the timer. And now, what is that you have to do? Once the packet is transmitted, you have to increment the sequence number because the next packet now you are going to transmit. So before you send transmit the next packet, you should increment the next sequence number. So this is what you have to do. So provided. So this thing you have to do, the packet can be transmitted only when your packet is inside the window. Suppose if your packet is not inside the window, that means what? You have to refuse that particular data. You cannot transmit that data. If the packet is not inside the window, that means it is towards the right. It is If it is greater than, the next sequence number is greater than base plus n. That means if the packet is outside the window, you have to refuse it. You cannot transmit it. Okay. So once you transmit the particular packet, what you can do? You have to wait for the acknowledgement at the sender side. So here we will just see the acknowledgement concept assume that you have received a packet and if that packet received packet this is acknowledgement packet received and if that acknowledgement is not corrupted acknowledgement packet if both the conditions are true what are you going to do that means your packet is correctly received at the receiver side and you have correctly received the acknowledgement and now what are you supposed to do you have to slide the window by one position so how do you slide the window by one position you are just incrementing the base pointer, that's all. Your base was earlier pointing to the first packet that you had sent. Now, immediately after the acknowledgement is received, increment the base. So, how do you increment the base? So, acknowledgement for which you are what you have received. Suppose, see here, it is a cumulative acknowledgement, right? If two packets are correctly received, that means two acknowledgements, you, are, you may not get two acknowledgements. You may get a cumulative acknowledgement. Like there, uh, for example, uh, packet 0 and 1 was sent. But uh, you will receive the acknowledgement for only 
packet 1 ACK1 only you will receive that means what both packets 0 and 1 are correctly received right so base you have to increment this time by not just one position you have to increment by two positions it all depends on the acknowledgement number because it is cumulative acknowledgement suppose four packets are correctly received at the receiver so you will get one acknowledgement with ACK4 as a sequence number right so this may that means what your window should be sliding by four positions because four packets for four packets uh, acknowledgement is received so that is how you increment the base by with the help of acknowledgement number okay and then you can check a condition what is that uh, you have to stop the timer for which packet this timer should be stopped for only the acknowledged packet that means if the acknowledgement is received for those packets only you are going to stop the timer okay stop the timer if suppose you are not receiving the acknowledgement for the packet then you cannot stop the timer you have to restart the timer okay you wait until the timer occurs and restart the timer for resending the packet okay right so you just see this is a condition for acknowledgement correctly receiving the acknowledgement what is the opposite of that suppose if you are receiving the acknowledgement but the received acknowledgement is corrupted in that case what are you going to do do nothing do nothing what you have to do just wait until the timeout occurs for that packet Suppose if you are receiving the corrupted acknowledgement, for that acknowledgement, corrupted acknowledgement, you cannot do anything. You have to wait until the timeout occurs for that packet. So once the timeout occurs, what the sender should do? Again, your FD has to resend the packets. So what packets he has to resend? It is not just one packet he has to resend. Right from the base, that means what? Right from the first packet inside the window till the last packet that was sent so how do you indicate the last packet that is sent that is next sequence minus one so you can just uh, go back and see there the first packet that was sent was pointed by ba pointed by base the last packet that is sent is pointed by next sequence minus one so next sequence minus one that means what all these yellow packets are the packets which is already sent right so base is the first packet that is already sent next sequence minus one is the last packet that is already sent so all these packets should be retransmitted all these packets should be retransmitted and this retransmission takes place only when only when if you are receiving corrupted acknowledgement or suppose if you don't receive any acknowledgement in both the cases the one you wait until the timeout occurs and then you start retransmitting the packet right from base till next sequence minus one and do not forget to start the timer for the very first packet that you are sending the oldest packet that you are sending now that is the very first packet that you are retransmitting for that you are going to start the timer okay so this is the timer uh, thing and this is the cor uh, uh, correct acknowledgement received and this is the corrupted acknowledgement received and this is the transmission of packet that is happening in go back in protocol and before all this things first do not forget to initialize the pointers so what is initializing the pointer base will be always pointing to one and also the first packet that is to be transmitted is indicated by next sequence number equal to one so both will be pointing to the first packet inside the window this is the initialization step so this is how the go back and protocol works at the sender side so if i'm speaking about the go back and receiver i mean the receiver side protocol you can see here at the receiver side also some few things are happening in go back and so what is that initially at the receiver side you have um, the receiver will be expecting uh, packets right so how is he expecting the packets in order only so the very first packet that he is expecting is expected sequence number is equal to one which indicates that this is the first packet that he is expecting and uh, immediately after this expect i mean this is the initialization of the sequence number expected sequence number now what is he doing at the receiver side he has to prepare the acknowledgement for the received packet correctly received packet so how is he doing that he will create an acknowledgement packet wherein he will insert the acknowledgement number which is acknowledgement number he is uh, he is inserting there it is first ack yeah one if if you start from one so one is the first acknowledgement number that you are using and this is the actual acknowledgement packet that he has prepared and add also checksum along with this acknowledgement to deal with the corrupted acknowledgement packet so acknowledgement packet is prepared at the receiver side okay so now uh, there is something happening here what is that if he is receiving the packet 
data correctly from the sender and if the received data is not a corrupted data and if the received data has is the expected one expected means if it has the correct sequence number expected sequence number how do you check that if it has the sequence number if the packet received packet has expected sequence number which is expected here expected is equal to one if it is expected sequence now it has expected sequence number if all conditions are true what do you do that means receiver has correctly received the packet, extract the data out of the packet, deliver that data to the application layer, right? So how do you, uh, after delivering the data to the application layer, what is the receiver's job? Receiver's job is to prepare the acknowledgement. So how do we prepare the acknowledgement? So add the sequence number, add the sequence number. So acknowledgement packet, checksum you add, and that packet now should be transmitted where? To the network layer, at the receiver side. So UDT send this operation to do and immediately after that do not forget to increase increment the sequence number. Next expected sequence number is incremented. This is how you get the next expected sequence number. Okay, this is what is done at the receiver side. But there is one default thing also is happening. So what is it? If the thing, if the packet is not received in order, in that case, or if the packet received is corrupted or something, in that case, the receiver has to just do one operation. What is that? Retransmit the packet, acknowledgement packet. So retransmission of correctly received acknowledgement packet. So retransmission of acknowledgement for correctly received packet. So what is retransmission means? See, already he has correctly received this particular packet. Suppose if the next packet is not received correctly, in that case, which acknowledgement he has to resend? It is this acknowledgement only what he had already sent should be retransmitted. So this will be invoked only when the receiver is not receiving the data in order or if the received data is corrupted. Only in that case, retransmission takes place over here. This is how the go back in receiver works. Okay. So this is the main concept of go back in wherein you can see uh, ordered delivery is expected at the receiver side. Cumulative acknowledgement concept is there. Sliding window concept is there where uh, multiple packets can be transmitted at once. But the only drawback here is retransmission when it is happening, not just one packet is retransmitted multiple packets are retransmitted and why this is happening because the receiver is not storing the correctly received packets even if it is correctly received but only thing is the order is mismatching if it is not in the order the receiver will simply discard those unordered data, unordered packets okay so that is the major drawback in go back in protocol i hope this go back in protocol is clear I uh, wish uh, I wish all of you to I hope all of you will uh, go through these concepts again uh, for uh, understanding it clearly okay I hope this go back in protocol is uh, uh, concepts are clear.